happened in Lanky was basically Simba, you know, he was promised something. Guys, how many times in our life are we promised something? And then, you know, or, or we think we're entitled to something, or we think we deserve something, that it, that when it gets taken away, we, you know, we, we run away from our problems. And that's exactly what Simba did, you know, when Simba, you know, he lost his father. And I you know, you know, I still have my father, but for, but for some of you who have lost somebody special in your life, it is very hard. It is a very deep and dark place, and you run away. And you do, and, and you and you run away, and Simba, he ran away to where? He found a little island, he found, you know, a kunumata, he found peace. Sometimes our peace isn't the peace that we need. Sometimes our peace we find, we find it in, in, in other things, we know, we find it in, in lust, we find it in drugs, we find it in alcohol, we find it in everything but the right thing. So what, what happened, it took Simba's friend to come back and make Simba realize, hey, you know, this is who you are. But what happens, we ignore it. Guys, sometimes we, our friends come back and tell us, hey, you know, this is not who you are, this is not who you want to be, but sometimes we don't want to hear it. We want to keep telling ourselves, no, 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 I, no, that's not for me, you know, you know, God, he has something planned, but hey, you know what, my, you know, something bad happened in my life, so now I'll forget it. Guys, it, it's not about forgetting, it's about remembering, and that's what today's mission is going to be about, is, you know, we have to come back and remember who we are in Christ. We have to come back and remember who God ordained us to be. We have to come back and remember what God promised us and what he has for us. Um, and then, so simply, he finds, you know, he, he, he finally realizes, like, man, I can't, I can't do this on my own. So what happens? He, he gets mad at his dad. You know, he, he, he finds, a, like, a lonely place. He finds, like, a, you know, just, he, he finds, like, just some place to run away. And he tells his dad, you know, you said you always be there for me, but you're not. How many times have we gone to God and said, you know, God, I thought you were going to be there for me. God, I thought you were going to be here for me. You know, I thought you were going to hold me. I thought you were going to take care of me. And then in our mind, we think God is dead, you know. We think Jesus abandoned us. We think God abandoned us. We think that nobody in the world cares for us. Why? Because we're still stuck in our mind that, you know, it's, it's just about me. I, it, but, but it's not about you. We have to remember that, you know, God, God, God is a God who sits on high and looks down low. God watches everything that happens to us. God knows what's going on. And what and what does somebody be reminded that hey you know your father still lives inside you, you just have to take a you know look deep you know when Simba first stepped in the water what happened, he only saw himself. Sometimes God when when we try to look and we try to find answers we only find answers for ourselves you know we only see the surface of who we are. We see ourselves as the world sees us. We see oh man you know what I'm dirty I'm disgusting nobody wants me nobody wants to be with me you know but, but guys that's not true because that's your flesh talking to you. That's not God talking to you. So what does Simba have to be reminded? That, that, that God is still with him. He lives inside of us. He, he dwells inside of us. You know, he dwells inside of your homes. He dwells inside of your jobs. God is all around. God will never leave you nor forsake you. That's in the Bible. Why? So that means it's written, it's permanent, and it's not going anywhere. That is a structural base that, that we can hang upon, and we can you know, just, just have solace knowing that, man, God is still with me. And at the end, what's the key word that, that Mufasa said? You've got to remember. God, God tells us that we have to remember who we are. We have to remember what he's done for us, what he's lifted you from, what he's made you overcome, whether it was finances, whether the struggles in your marriage, whether it was death, whether it was sickness. God still lifted you up, and he brought you from where you were before. That's why we're here. That's why, you know, that's why we praise God. That's why we give thanks to God. That's why we... You know, that, that's why we shout. That's why we come to church. That's why we do all things we do. Why? Because God remembered us when we forgot ourselves. Amen. Come on. Come on. That's what happens. We cannot forget who we are. Don't ever forget who you are. See, the problem is we listen to what the world wants us to be. We listen to what, what, everybody, wants, what everybody else wants us to be. We want to be this. We want to be that. No, guys, what you are, you are a child of God, and you better not forget. Amen. Amen. That's what we are. We are not. You know, we are not sinners. We are not, you know, we're, well, I mean, technically, we are sinners. <laughs> but, in a, you know, in a bigger scope, guys, don't, don't look at yourself as a sinner. And you know, just say, you know, I'm a person that makes mistakes. Because, why? Well, we can bounce that from a mistake. If you consider yourself a sinner, that means you will always be a sinner. If you stick in your mind, like, you know, man, you know, I'm just a sinner. No, you're not. You're a man. You're a woman. You're flesh. That's what you are. You're going to make mistakes. It's going to happen. Now, we're going to start off about 1 Samuel. 
first thing that um, it's going it's going to see where the Israelites and the Philistines were fighting over um, the ark, and they fought. Oh, I'm sorry. First thing in chapter seven, verse three is where we're going to start. Give a quick background of what's going on. Um, the Israelites and the Philistines are in battle. You know, they were fighting over this ark. You know, like um, the, the Philistines were constantly trying to attack the Israelites. Um, they, the Philistines captured the ark of the covenant, and he killed more than thirty thousand people. Guys, when somebody wants something you want, they want to do whatever it takes to get it. We have to protect what we what we value. Protect your families. You got to protect your house. Why? Because when the enemy wants what he what he wants, he would do whatever it takes. He would stop at nothing to capture your lives. He would stop at nothing to capture your wife. He would stop at nothing to capture your husband, your children, your jobs, your health. That's why we. That's why we have to stand. That's why we gotta stand fast. Um, then uh, the first thing they took the ark of the covenant, placed it next to the idol. The next morning, the statue was lying face down in front of the ark. Guys, the, no matter what. The Philistines wanted this Ark of Covenant. Why? Because they wanted they, they wanted the same blessings that, that, that the Israelites were having. But they didn't want it for good. You know, they just wanted it to be greedy. Guys, sometimes, how many, how many times do we kind of want something just because it looks good? Just because, well, the other person has it, so now I kind of want it. So I'm going to kind of do whatever I got to get to, to have it. Whether it's a marriage, whether it's love, whether it's um, money, a car, you know, we kind of, you know, we go over and above what we got to do to get something. But sometimes it's not the best thing for us. Sometimes God, God will break down what you have in place just to, you know, just to get you back and remind you who he is. Sometimes we put things in our lives that, you know, distract us from who God, well, you know, who God is. You know, whether it be family, whether it be friends. Guys, don't let things distract you from who, for what God wants you to be, for what God wants you to become. This is, they sent the ark from Ashad to Gath to Ekron. Everyone, wherever the ark was taken, the people were inflicted with tumors and death. Sometimes, guys, the things that we want to capture so much can also be the curse of us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the thing that we want so much and we think that we desire fleshly will also end up destroying the flesh. That's why when people get hurt and they get, you know, tormented, they turn to alcohol. They turn to different things. But what happens when alcohol enters your body? It changes your whole mind. It's poison. Drugs, what are they? It's poison. But at that time, it feels good. And at the time, for the Philistines, you know, they they knew that this ark was something, hey, you know, that, that, that they wanted. They wanted, you know, to, to feel great. You know, they wanted to be like Israelites. They wanted the same thing the Israelites had. You know, they wanted the, you know, the, 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 the joy. They wanted the freedom. But, the guys, the thing is, the, what the Philistines what the Philistines didn't realize was God was in that ark. See, the thing is, guys, we can't play with God. We can't take God and use him for whatever he wants to do, like he's some kind of magical wand, like hocus pocus, boom. It doesn't work like that. Guys, we got it. If you're going to play with God, then I suggest you leave. God is not a toy. He, he doesn't have a try me button. There is no money back guarantee on him. There's not. There's nothing like that. God is God. Amen. He is not something that, that, that we can take away. He's not something that we can give away. He's not something that can come and go. God is here. And it says, um, all together the Philistines had the ark for seven months. For seven months they were dealing with this turmoil. Seven months, guys. How long will it take for you to realize that, man, this thing isn't good for me? How long will you be dying than something you know is sin, that, that you know is hurting you, how long would it take us to realize, man, you know what, this is not good for me at all? It shouldn't take seven months. You know, if I'm, if I'm drinking and all of a sudden I get in a car crash, I should know right there and there, hey, no, this isn't for me. If I'm on drugs and I, and, and I almost die after my first overdose, I should know, hey, automatic, no, this is for me. But no, we still continue to search for it, we still continue to seek for it, and we still continue to press on. Why? Because we think that this is for us. We think that God has ordained this for us. And sometimes we get in our heads like, you know what? I'm meant to have this. I'm meant to have that. The thing is, guys, we're not meant to have anything. 
only thing we're meant to have is a relationship with Christ. That's what Amen. we're meant to have. Amen. 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 We're not meant to have all the money in the world. We're not meant to have all the clothes in the world. We're not meant to have the you know the, the fanciest cars. We're not meant to have the you know the the, the hottest woman or the hottest guy. We're meant to have a relationship with Christ, and with them blessings will come. And it says the Philistines sent the ark back to the Israelites in Beth. Sh I'm sorry, Beth Shemesh. Seventy Israelites died because they looked inside the ark. Guys, sometimes some some things aren't meant to be found. You know, if God has something for you, then He's going to reveal it. Don't go looking for it. Don't don't be curious. You know, it's like that old saying: curiosity killed the cat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to rush ahead and see what's and see what's in store for us. No, take guys, take your time. God's going to bless you when he's ready to bless you. God's going to bless you when he wants to bless you. Not when we want him to bless us. Amen. And it said, the ark of the Lord was taken to Kirath uh, Jerem, where it remained for 20 years. Now, it remained there for 20 years, and um, basically, you know, it, it remained there. Then the Romans came to attack. Now, nobody really knows where the ark went. Uh, but still, that's, that's not the point. The point is, guys, that take it from the Philistines. When we want something in greed, when we want something because somebody else has it, it's coming on the end right. So starting in chapter 7, verse 3. It said, Then Samuel said to all the people of Israel, If you are really serious, God said, if you are serious about what you want, God's going to God's gonna bless you. You know, we can't go into, you know, a prayer with a, with a nonchalant mind saying, like, All right, God, I kind of want you to bless me. If you can, you know, if you will. No, guys, if we are serious about what we want, if you're serious about what you need, God's going to provide. No matter what. God, God's not going to not provide. You know, he, he's a provider. He's a healer. That's what God is. And that's what he's going to do. It says, if you're serious about wanting to return to the Lord, then get rid of your foreign gods and your images. Guys, you have, again, going back to what I said before, what is blocking you? We have to figure out what's blocking us from God. Is it your family? Is it your husband? Is it the way you act? Is it the way you talk? Is it the way you see things? Is it what you listen to? Is it what you watch? Some people say, oh, well, that doesn't matter where you're wrong. <laughs> Guys, everything somehow, some way influences us in some, some particular manner. You know, I mean, I can't tell you how many times, you know, kids, you know, they watch, you know, rap videos, all of a sudden, you know, they think they're some kind of gangster. You know, people who watch um, Kung Fu movies, like my wife was explaining to me the other day, like, if I watch a uh, like karate movie, I'm going down the hallway, I can, like, I'm, you know, Jackie Chan or something. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Simply because we get in our mind, like, hey, you know, that's what I want to be like. That's, that's what I want to be. But... In real life, that's not who I am. Guys, in real life, you're not what that magazine tells you who you are. You're not what that person told you who you are. So guys, cast down those images. Cast down those idols. Guys, there's nothing more important in life than your own life. <coughs> you shouldn't have to worry about, man, you know, well, well where's my next meal coming from? Well, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to pay for that? How am I going to pay for this? Why? Because we put all our idols and our gods into money. That's why we start um, stressing when you know when when bill time comes. I know I do. I'm like, oh man, I only got fifty dollars and I didn't rent do. Why? Because we we made money such an item, we made money such an image that we think that that's the only thing we need to survive, and it's not. God is who? He's our supplier. And it says, determined to Obey only the Lord. Guys, you got to be determined. Once you set your mind to something, you can accomplish whatever you want to do. That's how some of us became business owners. That's how, we, that's how some of us became uh, what we are today. Why? Because we, had, we were determined to do it. And that's all it takes. It takes determination. If you go in there with a, you know, with a lazy attitude and you think like, man, well, I'm not going to be able to do this. Well, then fine. You're not going to do it. But if you go in there and you have a mindset to, hey, you know what, no, no matter how many tries it takes, no matter how many times I fall, no how many times I give up, I'm still going to get back up, I'm going to dust myself off, and, and, and I'm going to get it. And then, and by God, you know, we have a lot of people, in example, 
like I always use Mr. Quinn as an example. When Quinn broke his knee, that kid was very determined to get back on that skateboard again. No matter what. Very, very determined. And what happened? He finally got back on it. And now he's, he's getting all around. <laughs> but the thing is, guys, how many times in life have you failed, but you were determined to get back up again? How many times have your family fell apart, but you were determined to bring your, fa your family back together again? That's where it takes determination. When the bills are low, when your health is low, it's determination that, that, that gets you back up where you need to be. It's that determination that you know, no matter what the enemy throws against us, I'm going to throw it right back at him. It's that determination to stand fast when the enemy comes against your house and you say, you know what, man, no, I'm going to push back. That's determination. When you look at your wife, when you look at your husband, when you look at your kids, like, you know, man, I'm determined to make a change for them. I'm determined to, to you know, get them out of Egypt. Amen. I'm determined to bring them to the promised land. God, that's what, that's what draws us closer to, to the Lord. Amen. Determination. It says, determined to, their, you know, obey only the Lord, then he will rescue you from the Philistines. Right there, God's going to rescue you. With determination, he will rescue you. God's your life. God, God is your, your life raft. That's what he is. He's your hope. He's your rescue. He's your comforter. He's going to rescue you. Just put your faith in him. That's all it takes. Put your faith in him. It says, so the Israelites got rid of their images of Baal and Ashtoreth and worship only the Lord. That's it, guys. Worship only God. There is no reason why you should worship anything else. Yes, we need money. Yes, we need food. Yes, we need clothes. But who provides all of it? God provides it. So we shouldn't be worried about where our money is going to come from. It's going to come from north, east, south, and west. That's where it's going to come from. It's not, it's not going to come from our boss. It's not going to, no, it's come from God. It said, Then Samuel told them, Gather all of Israel to Mesbah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. Guys, sometimes it takes one person just to pray for everybody. Samuel prayed for a whole nation. Sometimes, guys, we, don't, we can't even pray for ourselves. If one man can pray for a whole nation, why can't we pray just for our church? Why can't we pray for our family? Why can't we pray for our city? Why can't we pray for our state? One man prayed for an entire nation. That's all it took. One prayer. Guys, when... When the, when the enemy hits hard, don't always say, oh, you know, I, I can't pray. Yes, you can. You can always pray. That should be your first thing to do. Before anything else, before, you know, going to Oprah, before going to wherever, <laughs> before going to Google, you pray. <laughs> you pray about it. It says, so they gathered at Mesco, and in a great ceremony, drew water from a well and poured it out before the Lord. Now, when you say um, draw water, and you pour it off from the well, what, what this meaning is, it was a ritual that, we, that, that they would do. They would take water from the well, they pour it out as a sign of drawing from the Lord and pouring out their sins before the Lord. Guys, sometimes you have to draw, draw out what from inside you that's, that's holding you back. That's stopping you from being determined. Draw, you know, draw that from inside you. Whether it's life issues, whether no matter what it is, God wants to draw that out from you, and then you lay down before God. That's why we come to the altar. The altar is where we lay down all of our sins. The, the altar is where we lay down all of our um, all of our hurt, all of our anything that that you deal with. We put it before God. Guys, sometimes you know we 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 have that will in our life, but sometimes we act like we can't see the bottom of it. We're too scared to look into it. Oh, well, it's deep and dark down there. I, I, don't, I don't go in deep dark places. I know me, I don't go in deep dark places. So. <laughs> when you think about it, it's like, it's very simple, though. Just drop, God, just reach into, you know, your heart and just realize what is keeping you from him. What's keeping you from the Lord? And it says, they also went without food all day and confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. Guys, when, when you're with God, you don't need food. If God truly is with you, then hunger will not matter. If you're focused, if you're, if you're you know, dead on with the Lord, 
Guess what? God fills you up. His word fills you. God provides for you. So don't worry while you're praying, like, oh, man, I'm getting a little hungry. But, you know, we, we get so easily distracted when we're praying. Like, the, the small thing distracts us. Oh, well, I wonder who's touching me. Or, wow, man, somebody's breath is kind of hot. <laughs> or, oh, man, you know, I'm, my, my knees are starting to hurt. Or my feet are starting to hurt. Or my foot just fell asleep. We think about all these things while praying, and we've been distracted. But, guys, that's not the point. The point is that you're just one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. You're, you know, that, that, that's you in God's time. It's not about being comfortable. When did God ever say that, that, that the Christian world is going to be a comfortable one? He never did. Never did God say that, oh, that the Christian world is going to be an easy walk. It's going to be a, you know, a, a, a you know, walk in the hills. No, it's not. Guys, the Christian walk is one of the most hardest walks you will ever walk. Why? Because you're constantly being tested. You're constantly being tried. We're constantly being attacked from the enemy. And sometimes he attacks from different places that, that we can't even, you know, keep up with it. But as long as you stay determined and you realize who God is and you pray, nothing can come against you. It says, when the Philistines' rulers heard that Israel had gathered a mesbah, they mobilize their enemies in advance. Guys, when you start praying, the enemy's going to advance. When you start praying, the enemy's going to come. Why? Because the enemy hears it. And, and the last thing he wants to do is for you to try to overtake anything. Guys, when, you, when we look at the things we look at, God's already assembling his army. Why? Because God knows what you're going through. When you hit that hard time in your life, God already sees what you're going through. He's already mobilizing his armies. But just know that, that, that the enemy's going to be mobilizing also to try to tear down what you already built up, to try to bring you back down to where you used to be. It says, the Israelites were badly frightened when they learned that the Philistines were approaching. Guys, how many times do we get frightened when that issue comes to us? When we're faced with death, when we're faced with sickness, when we're faced with trying times, how many times do we fear? We forget a lot. We automatically start to fear. You know, we you know we automatically get shaken. We automatically get hurt. You know, we automatically just want to run from cover. We want to hide because we feel like, oh man, this is this battle isn't for me. Guys, you can fight any battle you want to. You just got to have a will to do it. See, the thing is, God doesn't, you know, God, God doesn't pick the battles he wants to fight. God will fight all your battles as long as you put your trust in him. He doesn't go, oh, well, I'm going to pick this one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick that one. No, 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 no. He fights all your battles. And it's even got to realize is when, when the enemies surround us, guess what? God surrounds our enemies. Amen. Amen. No matter what, God, God's going to be there. And then, so what happened? The, and verse 8 says the Israelites were badly frightened when they learned that the Philistines were approaching and they said don't stop pleading with our Lord to save us from the Philistines they begged Samuel God sometimes we don't we shouldn't go to somebody else and say stop pleading why because we have the strength in ourselves we have the strength to, to, um, to pray I should have to go to somebody else and say hey Pastor Corey can you pray for me hey Pastor Corey you know you know, my life just it's just bad. Can you pray for me? Pray yourself. First, you are the first line of defense for your home. It's not the pastor, it's not your friends. It's you. You are the first line of defense for your home. <coughs> no matter how you know how much we try, no matter how much we want to Google things and, and try to look up information. No, it's not. It's it's you. You are the first line of defense. So what does that mean? You have to pray. Don't, don't cry for somebody else to pray for you because they're not in charge of your home. Who's in charge of your home? You are. Especially as a man. As a man, we are in charge of our homes. When any comes in attacks, our wives look to us. They don't look to anybody else. They look to us for protection. They look for us to be the man of God that they need us to be right in there at that moment. Not a second too soon. 
but we, we can't even pray for our own homes, and we have to ask another man to pray for our homes, that's when we got to realize, how's our walk with God? You should be thinking, like, man, why is it that I'm asking another man to pray for my home? You should be asking yourself, why am I asking, going to another man and saying, hey, pray for my wife? No, that is your wife, that is your family, that is your kids. You need to pray for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't ask another man to pray for your kids. Don't ask another person to pray for your kids. You take charge of your home, you approach the devil, and you fight the devil, and you fight the devil face on. That's what you got to do. You have to go toward the enemy. You don't run from the enemy. Why? Because as soon as you retreat, what, what happens? The enemy takes over your home. And that's how the enemy comes. How, how does the enemy come? Like a thief in the night. Right when we're down. Yes, as men, we do get hurt. Yes, as men, we do stumble. Yes, as men, we do fail. But you know what, guys? If you're here today, that means you somehow are a man of God in some way, some shape, form, or fashion. You are a provider of your home, and you protect your home. So when the enemy comes, you stand, no, I will not cry to somebody else. I will cry to my God, and my God will give me the strength I need to face that enemy. Amen. This is, on verse 9, So Simon took a young man and offered up to the Lord as a burnt offering. And he pleaded with the Lord to help Israel, and the Lord answered. And then again, guys, what, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are we willing to put, you know, to, to put away in order to get that close to God? What are we willing to do and what are we willing to burn out of our lives to get that connection back to God? Is it? I mean, <coughs> if, if God said, you know what, hey, you know, you need to stop hanging out with your family and friends, what are you going to say? Well, well God, you can't tell me to stop hanging out with my family. You know, that's my family. Christmas coming up soon. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I want to make sure I have the most gifts under the tree. Or, you know, hey, you know, it's Thanksgiving coming up. You know, my mom cooks good turkey. I can't, I can't let her go just quiet yet. But that's not the point. See, the thing is, if God tells you to burn off something, it's for a reason. <coughs> if God tells you to burn something out of your life, it's for a reason. And guys, if you, and the, and the moment we wait might be a little bit too late. See, we can't wait to burn off things in our, you know, in our lives. We can't wait to, you know, say, hey, you know what, God, I want to burn it. I want to. I want to get rid of it, but it just feels so good. But, man, it looks so good. Oh, man, but I'm getting all this money. Oh, man, but I'm feeling so good. For, for what? For a temporary satisfactory? Or do you want a permanent? And sometimes we can't even fathom that. You know, we think it's so hard to, 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 to throw away DVDs to throw away drugs, to throw away the alcohol. We say, oh, well, you don't understand the pain that I'm going through. You don't, you don't understand what I'm going through. God understands everything you're going through. Yeah. For goodness sakes, guys, he had to watch his own, side, his, his own son die on the cross. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that you don't understand what God is, what, that God doesn't understand what you're going through? Come on. He had to turn away from his own son to bear our sins. And we sit here and say, oh, well, I just don't, I just don't have, I don't know how to. Then it says, on verse 10, Just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines arrived to attack Israel. But the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven that day, and the Philistines were thrown in such confusion that the Israelites defeated them. Let me tell you something, guys. When, when God speaks, the earth shakes. Amen. Mm -hmm. When the enemy comes against you, and you shout out to God, and God talks, and God speaks against it, guess what? They're confused. They don't know what to do. It's kind of like, you know, if you turn on a light at a certain house, uh, some houses, and all, and all the little roaches scatter. <laughs> That's what happens. Guys, when, when light enters darkness, and, and, and where does the enemy lie in the darkness, and, and, and that light finally shines, they scatter. That's what happens. Guys, your enemies are going to scatter. But if you stay in that place of darkness, if you choose to walk in the darkness, guess what? That the, the enemy will consume you. But as soon as you turn on the light, they will flee. No matter what. In verse 11, it says, Then the men of Israel chased them from Mesbah to, place, to a place below Bethkar, slaughtering them along the way. 
Men, when you when we decide to stand up and be a man, guess what? We will slaughter anything that comes against our family. We will, you know, we we will carry our swords, and when the enemy comes against our wives, when they come against our children, they're going to flee. The, the, the enemy is going to flee, and we will chase them. Guys, that's what that's the vision we got to have. We gotta, we got to have a vision of ourselves chasing away the enemy, not a vision of the enemy chasing us, but we have to chase what what God has put before us. Chase it. Chase it away. And in verse 12 says, Then Samuel took a large stone and placed it in between the towns of Mespah and Josiah. And he named it Ebenezer, which means stone of hell. Upon this point, the Lord has helped us. Now, that's like the key verse I want to focus on was, guys, what stone do you have? Everybody has a stone in their life. They have a, you know, they have a key point or an event that took place that, that brought us closer to God. Guys, everybody has a stone, whether it's your family, your stone. Why? Because, you know, we can look back at the stone and say, you know what, this is where God brought me from. Why? Because, you know, all through life, you know, we have trials, we have tribulations. But no matter what God has brought you through, you can go back and say, you know what, I can overcome my, my current situation. Why? Because God brought me from this place. This is where God brought me from. This is where I'm at now. Guys, you won't be here from you know you won't be here today if God didn't get you from that previous point. Amen. Like I said, we we we've all lost something in life. We've all lost a family member. We've all lost you know a brother or a sister. Some of us some along the way, and it doesn't have to mean physical death. It could just mean you know just as if your family doesn't even care about you anymore. You know, oh boy, my brother doesn't talk to me. My mom doesn't talk to me. My dad doesn't talk to me. And guys, somehow we're still able to overcome it. Why? Because we don't put our faith in our family. Why? We put our faith in God. Amen. We set down our rock in our lives and we determine, you know what, I'm not going back to where, to where I once was. I have determined not to go back. I've got my Ebenezer rock and I'm, and I'm standing firm. And God, who is that rock to us? Jesus is that rock in our life. Amen. That's who that rock is. Guys, why? Because without Jesus, we wouldn't be sitting here today. We wouldn't be looking at each other today. No matter what goes on in our lives, God, we gotta set Jesus as our rock. You know, everybody said, "Hey, you know, that's um, you know, yes, we do pray for parents. You know, like there, there's no doubt about the saturation that happens, but it's something that um, somebody posted, Ariana. She posted the other day. You know, instead of you know just saying praying, just pray. That's all it takes, God. You know, we we forget to actually pray when we say we're praying." That's the funny thing is, you know, like we'll post, oh, I'm praying, but are we actually praying? Like, we're, like we'll post, oh, praying, and then scroll down and then look at the video. You know, guys, you know, in life we have to remember that when, that when, when we're praying, there's no pause video. You know, we can't scroll down and keep on looking for some other things to entertain us. No. When life hits us, that's when you get down and pray. We have to remember who is in charge. You know, everybody's getting mad at the government. They're like, well, this is, uh, you know, the president's fault. It's this fault. Guys, you know what? We don't don't focus on the small things. Because why? We can't handle what the president does. We can't handle what all these other people do. You need to put your focus on God. That's, that's, that's what we got to remember, who our trust lies in. That's who's going to defend us. That's who's going to be there for us. It's not anybody else. It's God. And, um. 1 Corinthians Remembrance is a big thing. So it says, um, I forgot the market. But well, anyway, it talks about how God is um, drinking from the cup. And the cup represents the what? You know, it, it represents the uh, blood of Jesus. And it says, you know, take this cup and remember it for who I am and what I've done. God, sometimes we got to take that cup that Jesus has offered us and we have to just remember. That's why we, you know, that's why we do, um, you know, the, uh, you know, that, that, that's why we drink from the cup. That's why we eat the bread. Why? It's in remembrance of what God and Jesus, well, what, what Jesus did for us. 
That's why we do it. You know, guys, you know, Jesus wasn't joking when he said, you know, take my blood, and when I take my breath before you, know, this is my broken body. Jesus literally, you know, he was broken for us. That's what we have to remember. Right when we think we're broken, just remember how broken Jesus did he got for you. Guys, it's not always about being, you know, oh, man, you know, I'm going to, you know, my, my life is going to be fantastic. No. But when we get down to the point and when we're at the altar, God, just remember what Jesus did for you. Remember that he was broken for you. Remember that no matter what, that his blood was shed for you, that his body was broken, and that's what we have to remember. We don't remember what happened in the past. We don't remember what's going on. We remember that God sent his own son to die for us. He didn't send him to die for anything but, but us. In Isaiah 49, 15, or chapter, chapter 49, verse 15 and 16. Verse 15 of Isaiah says that can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, I would not forgive you. Guys, I can tell, I can promise you right now, like uh, there, there is no love like a mother's love. There is no <coughs> love like a mother who loves her child, a mother who was willing to fight for her child. A mother who's willing to provide for her child. A mother would give her very last breath to save her child. There is no doubt about it. And God, you know, and in this verse, God even explains, he says, but even if that were possible, see, guys, you know, God loves us more than a mother loves, his, loves her own child. That's how much God, like, now that's, you know, and, and we can begin to even fathom what that means. I mean, when you look at your child, and well, especially for a mother, when a mother looks at her baby, you know, that's, that's hers. And even and, and even for a dad, you know, I remember when my even when all three of my daughters were born, God bless their souls. They were <laughs> they and, and and you sit in the hospital and what happened? You hold that child for hours. And time just passes you by. Why? Because you're thinking, man, this is my this is my child. This is my child. You know, this is this is me. And it's a whole different style of relationship. Why? Because that's, you have to nurture that child. And when that child grows up and he goes to college, and no matter what, my life is like my mom always tells me, I may be 28 years, you know, 26 years old, but I'm still my mom's baby. No matter what. And it says, on verse 16, it goes, see, I have written your name on the palm of my hand. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem walls and ruins. Guys, you're just written on a, you're on, on God's palm. Of the hand. You know, you're written on his hand. There is no way he can forget you. There is no way that God will ever forget you. You know, we always want to write posts on Facebook, you know, just to get attention. You know, we want, we, we sometimes want to seek out different forms of attention, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's, you know, texting, whether it's just, you know, just kind of going around being mopey, some actual drunk, like, oh, nothing, I'm just having a bad day. And you wait for somebody to answer you like, having a bad day, having a bad day. And then somebody's like, oh, what's wrong? You're like, well, you know, this is what happened. <laughs> uh -huh. Why? Because we want that attention. We want somebody to not forget us. You know, th the sad thing is, you know, it's kind of, kind of going out to suicides almost. Suicides happen because they think the world's just going to forget about them anyways. But guys, just know when you do a certain action, no matter what it is, sometimes it has a deeper effect on you. It doesn't just affect you, it affects somebody else. Like going back to Lion King, what happened when Simba ran away? The place that he was, you know, that he was supposed to reign over, the place that he was supposed to take his home, was destroyed because he let the enemy come in and destroy it. And not only did it affect him, but it affected his whole entire family. Guys, when we forget who we are, it's going to it's going to affect the entire family. Not only you, but it's going to affect your your mom, your dads. 
your friends at work, your friends at school, it's going to affect the entire nation. Why? Because you decided that you had a function <coughs> that was selfish. So remember, just, I mean, just, just, just think that when I feel like I'm not loved, God loves you more than a, than a mother loves his own unborn, unborn child or his born child. And then if Psalms, sorry, I'm going to Psalm 136. Now let's look at verse uh, 23 and 24. What's awesome is God was, uh, you know, God was really working on a lot of us uh, before service, and um, it's kind of ironic that uh, Pastor Corey had access to read, you know, Psalm 136, and uh, verse 23 and 24 popped up, and it states, "He remembered us in our weakness, and He saved us from our enemies." Guys, God, you know, but let's just thank God simply because He remembered us when we were at our lowest of the low. We, God remembered us when we didn't even remember ourselves. God remembered us even though we forgot Him, even though we forgot His Son, even, even though we forgot His promise, God still remembered who we are. See, God still, you know, God still remembers that we're flesh. And even though we can forget about Him, we can go 10 years without going to church. And guess what? God still can remember who you are. You could not pray for, you know, a year, but guess what? The, the, the moment you begin praying again, God's going to remember who you are. God never forgets you. God never forgets his own child. And he has many children. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I go around now to my kids, I'm like, here, like, you, kid. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, so I, I start, you know, baby one, baby two, baby three. Why? Because it, for me, it gets confusing. Imagine being, in, but imagine being a father of a billion kids, a billion children. God remembers every single one of you. Why? Because every single one of us is different. We, and we have to remember that. I mean, that's. I mean, I'm not going to kind of keep us long, but you know, when we go into this. Um, when we go into these songs, you know, you're just like, and, and the song is called a place called Look How You Lived With Me. Guys, you know, this message will simply just be about we can't forget who we are and we can't forget where we came from. Don't forget your past and get ready for the future. Because what happens when, when, when you forget the past? People say, oh, forgive and forget. <laughs> Guys, you can't forget. Why? Because you're doomed to repeat it. I mean, it's kind of like what our history, our history teachers always told us. That's why we have history, because you do to repeat it. But it's true. If you forget where you came from, if you, if you forget where God brought you from, if you forget the things you were told, the things that were said, guys, you're doomed to repeat the same cycle. Mm -hmm. You have to remember that, hey, you know what? God brought me from here. God placed that Ebenezer stone, and he, and, and he set that stone upon my life, and now I stand high. God, you know, God lifted us from, from pain. God lifted us from suffering. God, you know, look how God lifted you. You know, when you look at your wife, when you look at your kids, when you look at your husband and your wife, you have to think about, man, you know, this is where God, this is where God's brought me to. And we've all struggled with some kind of, you know, form of sin. I don't care who you are. Whether with drugs, alcohol, whether pornography, whether it's you know, you know, lust, whether it's greed. Some shape, form, or fashion, guys, we were in a dark place, depression. We were in that dark place. But guess what? You're here right now. That's, that's, that's what matters. You're, like, like Pastor Corey said today, if, if one thing we should raise our hands today, it's simply because we're, that, that we woke up this morning. Amen. 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 That's where God bought you. If you, can't, if you can't even think about one thing, what God has done for you, just say, you know what? I have breath in my body. Amen. You know what? I have my, I have my child right beside me. You know, thank God I still have my husband. Thank God I still have my family. Thank God I still have my friends. Thank God I still have my food on my table, clothes on my back. Thank God I still have a roof over my head. See, guys, we, we get so immature and we get so conceited that we think, you know, man, oh, but 
I did this. I put it over my head. No, 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 no. See, the thing is, God is your wall. God is your Amen. foundation. Amen. Amen. You didn't set up those walls. God is your foundation. God is inside your house. Amen. You know, you didn't pay your bills. You didn't, you know, you didn't get yourself out of debt. You didn't get yourself out of alcoholism. You didn't get yourself out of pornography. We go around pressing like, oh, it was me. No, no, we have to remember that it was God that did it. Remember, Amen. God delivered us out of Egypt. Amen. 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 God is the one that took the shackles off of you. When you felt chained, when you felt broken, when you felt down, God is the one who brought you up. Amen. It wasn't yourself. It wasn't your pride. It wasn't you being macho. It wasn't you, you know, just sitting around doing nothing. No, it was God who brought you from there. It was God who shut the lion's mouth. It was God who brought down our giant. It was God who calmed the seas. It wasn't you. It was God who was raised today. It was Jesus. You know, it's not us. It's not us at all. It's, you know, the thing is, we have, we have to take us out of the equation. And then we can start moving forward. Amen. That's what it takes. See, you know, the thing is, we get so trapped and drowned in, you know what, man? You know, my life is going horrible. You know, my, my wife is leaving me. My marriage is leaving me. You know, my kids don't like me. So what? Place that rock. Put that stone down. Look back and say, you know what, God, you brought me from here. And happy day if I let the enemy come in and take it from me. Amen. 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 We have to set it up, guys. We have to be like Samuel. When times get hard, we have to pray. When times get hard, we have to stay in front of the enemy. When times get hard, we don't cry to somebody else. You speak with your own mouth and your own tongue, and you confess to God, like, God, no matter what I go through, you're going to deliver me from it. Amen. Amen. That's what we have to do. See, guys, no, it, 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 it's not rocket science at all. <laughs> it's not rocket science. It doesn't take a math formula to do it. It doesn't take anything else to do it. What? It takes... Five seconds just to say, no, God, you are here. God, look how look where you brought me from. And sometimes we just concede it, you know, because you know, we'll we'll go to church and we'll say, you know what? I'm you know, I'm a little bit too embarrassed to you know, go up front, you know, that's not for me, you know, I'm gonna sit back here, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna just kind of, you know, look at my phone for a little bit, you know, see what's going on on Facebook. Come on, but then but then we wonder, but well, while we're flipping around through Facebook, well, how come God just passed me by? God didn't pass you by, you passed God by. Amen. That's right. That's right. See, the thing is, we gotta realize, guys, you know, God doesn't, God doesn't run away from us, but God also doesn't run to us either. God is st standing right there in front of you, and you, are, and all you gotta do is take a step toward Him. Amen. Amen. That's it. You don't have to run from Him. You don't have to beg Him. You don't have to plead with Him. God, sometimes we, we, we beg and plead for the world to save us from ourselves. We, you know, we beg and plead, like, oh, you know, can somebody talk to me? No, God doesn't beg and plead. You don't have to beg and plead him. God was sitting and he waits for you. That's the thing we got to realize. God is waiting for you. God is waiting for you to take that, you know, to take that lead. God is waiting for you to, to run to him. See, and we, and, and we forget that. You know, we think God abandoned us because, oh, man, you know, my life is going horrible. No. You know, your life is going horrible because the enemy pressure gets you because they know God is fighting for you. That's why your life is going horrible. Amen. And if we look at it, it's going horrible. It's not going horrible. Why? It's going exactly the way God wants it to be. Why? Because God makes us stronger, not weaker. Amen. Amen. It takes us to go through something to make us stronger. That's right. God, you know, it's kind of like working out. You know, if you go to the gym and you got that last set, what's happening? You know, on that last set, you're like, oh, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. It's that, it's, you know, and you get that, you know, you got your spotter who's like, hey, man, one more. That's God. God's saying, hey, come on, push, push. That's what you got to do. Just one more chance. Give me, you know, give me one more, you know, rep. God is saying, hey, guys, give me, give me one more shot. How about that? God is saying, come on, man, give me one more shot. Let me face this enemy with you. Let me take you out of Egypt. Let me shut this lion's mouth. Let me face down this giant. Let me do it. That's all we got to do, God. I mean, all we got to sit back and, and pray. That's what, you know, is remembering is like, you know, it's a hard thing for some of us to do. Because we get so, you know, we, our minds get so clouded. We remember other stuff. Why? You know, we, we remember to pay the bill. That's an important thing. You know, we remember to, you know, take the trash out. We remember, hey, you know, I got this going on. I mean, some, some of y'all, especially with kids, uh, I'm not ready. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean... Some of us would like kids with busy schedules, like, oh, the kids got band, kids got this, kids got that. 
and you remember every single date that happened. Some of us, uh, some of you guys, are like Shannon, I, 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 I got to give you props. You remember everybody's birthday. I can barely remember my own son's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> like I got to like mark it like big on the like wall or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> But but we remember everything goes. But when it's to, but when it comes to something small, we can't even remember to pray. That's a sad thing. We can't remember just, hey, you know what? It takes five seconds out of my life just for a quick moment just to get on my knees and say, you know, God, you're in control. Mm-hmm. But, but we remember everything else. Like, how many of us have, like, Google accounts, Facebook accounts, all kinds of accounts that get in their different passwords and numbers, and I don't see how even I remember them. Like, I got, like, like a little tablet where I got to write down everything because I don't remember half of them. Like, my wife, she pays all the bills. So therefore, I can, like, you know, try to remember every bill and password. I can't do it. Guys, guess what? There's no password, there's no username required to get into the Bible. Amen. Amen. Why? Because God's going to pay that bill for you. Amen. You don't have to worry about paying that bill. Why? Because Jesus already paid the bill for you. That's right. Your life is already paid off. Mm-hmm. You, don't, you, know, you are no longer in debt. You're no longer in bondage. You're no longer in chains. Why? Because God already paid that debt. Amen. So guess what? There's no, don't, you know, we don't have to get so caught up in remembering all this important stuff, remember that God is in control. Amen. And with that, Eric, you know, I'm actually that you um, play that song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>